A ship maneuvers within 2,500 meters of an island's 1,800 meter high mountain peak requires a projectile, projectile at an enemy ship 610 meters on the other side of the peak, as illustrated in Figure 329. The ship shoots the projectile with an initial velocity of 250 meters per second at an angle of 75 degrees. How close to the enemy ship does the projectile land? How close vertically does the projectile come to the peak? So, we know our ship, I by the way, I prefer sailboats. Our ship is 2,500 meters in front of the peak horizontally. The other ship is 610 meters on the other side of the island horizontally. The peak of the island has a, uh, a height of 1,800 meters. We have an initial velocity. So, we're launching this projectile at 250 meters per second at an angle of 75 degrees above the horizontal. So, the, the projectile does something that looks like this. There are two questions. Part A, how close to the other ship does our projectile land? Visually illustrated right there. Part B, how close to the peak does the projectile come as it's passing over the top of the peak? So those are the two things we're solving for those two distances, A and B. In order to solve for how far our projectile lands from the other ship, What's our general approach? Tina? Believe it or not, we actually do not need to break the initial velocity into its components. We will for part B, but this is something you need to be able to recognize, and we don't have to do it now. We're going to do it in a little bit, but instead, Austin, this is a specific example for part A where we could use the range equation because Remember, the displacement in the y direction is zero. Therefore, the displacement in the x direction, by definition, is called the range, this distance from here to here. So because of that, Tina, we don't need to break it up for this part. Okay, so we know, let's put it here, the range then is equal to the initial velocity squared times the sine of two theta divided by g. Okay, working forward, Please, Taylor. Remember, we don't need to break that into its components because we use the magnitude of the initial velocity. Keep going, Taylor. Sign to theta. What's theta? So sine of 2 times 75 degrees divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Little g, the acceleration due to gravity, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Are you positive it's positive? Do we have to sing the song again, Taylor? Yes. yes. No. yes. We don't have time right now. I, I wish we had time. Remember, please, that g is a positive number, 9.8 meters per second squared. Therefore, we can figure out the range. Could I please have the range? Yeah, go ahead. 7, 6. OK. Great. So we've got the range. We need to figure out how far the uh, projectile lands from the other ship, please. How do we get to that? Uh, Christine? You can see visually that the range is going to be equal to 2,500 plus our 610 plus whatever we want, whatever we need for our answer A. So, answer A, then this distance is going to be equal to the range minus the 2,500 minus the 610, or 3,188.76 minus the 2,500 minus the 610. The answer for part A. I'm sorry. 78.76. So with sig fix, 79. Great. So we figured out how far the ship lands, or the projectile lands from the other ship. Again, you've got to identify when you can use the range equation. Part B. 
B. We need to break the initial velocity vector into its components. We have this initial velocity vector and the initial velocity in the x direction, initial velocity in the y direction, and theta. Just to make sure we're absolutely clear, why can we not use the range equation for part b? Ezra? Displacement in the y direction is not zero. It's not zero. Displacement in the y direction is not zero, so we cannot use the range equation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to split things up into our x direction and our y direction. But before we do that, we have this initial velocity vector that's neither directly in the x direction or in the y direction, so we need to break it into its components. Please, Arjun, break the initial velocity vector into its components. Um, the velocity initial for x equals 64.7. Wow! Did you hear that? He is amazing. I don't see that number anywhere on the board. He's just, whoo, out of the brain. 64.7 something or other. Arjun, he's amazing. Dare I say, Arjun, that we have to do a little bit of work to get there? You don't want to fall down the stairs. It's ugly. Arjun, where do we start? I don't care how you did it. To be honest, I want to know how we're going to do it. Here's the thing, Arjun. Right now, you're not able, able to follow what you've done. That's not good, is it? No, that's not good because you're not really showing your work. That's sad. Megan? I have to draw a triangle, and there's 45 degrees and 45 degrees. So I Oh, sorry. Sorry, 75 degrees. And then you use uh, trigonometry to find each uh, velocity. So you start by labeling the hypotenuse as... Square plus B squared. Struggling. Tish helps out. Uh, I'm going to use the equation uh, sine of theta equals uh, opposite over hypotenuse. Holy cow, we start with an equation? What a strange concept. Arjun, what's opposite theta? <coughs> no, you can't blank out. I, you were with me earlier, and you, we didn't get anywhere. Arjun, you've got to be with me. I can't do this. I can't do this on my own. Actually, I can't. But <laughs> it doesn't do you any good if I do it on my own, right? Truth be told, it doesn't do you any good. Lindsay, what's opposite theta? Um, velocity initial to the y direction. Hypotenuse? Over the velocity initial. Great, so the velocity initial to the y direction equals the velocity initial times the sine of theta. The velocity initial was 250. The theta is uh, 75 degrees, and therefore the velocity initial to the y direction, please, is? 814, so we'll just do 6, 6, it's fine. Meters per second. We can do the same thing with cosine. Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. The velocity initial in the x direction divided by the velocity initial, therefore the velocity initial in the x direction equals the velocity initial times the cosine of theta, or 250 times the cosine of 75 degrees. Therefore the velocity initial in the x direction equals 64.707. I think I've heard something about that before. So we figure out the last initial in the x direction, it is 64.707 meters per second. The velocity initial in the y direction, which is equal to 241.481 meters per second. Great. We have listed what we know in the x direction, y direction. We know more stuff. Tina? Uh, the displacement in the x direction is We know the displacement in the x direction is 2,500 meters because the question specifically refers to how high is the object when it's gone 250 or 2,500 meters. More stuff. Sure. Uh, acceleration in the y direction. What are we trying to find? True, we need to find time. But before we talk about time, what are we actually trying to find in the problem? David. 
B. Yes. Uh, how far the projectile is over the mountain? B. In order to find B, how far the projectile is over the mountain, you know, we need to find? We need to find the displacement in the y direction. Because yes, eventually we're trying to find B in order to do so. We need to figure out the displacement, bless you, in the y direction, which is going to be all the way from there to there. Why are we figuring out time? Why time? Maxim? Because it's a scalar and it means for both the x direction and the y direction. Because time is a scalar, it's independent direction, it means in the x and y direction. Where are we going to start? to figure out the change of time here. Or how are we going to figure out the change of time? We know the velocity in the x direction yeah. is equal to delta, the displacement in the x direction over the change in time. But I'm confused because we have the velocity initial in the x direction, yet this equation is the velocity in the x direction. Please explain, Zachary. Um, the velocity in the x direction doesn't change. So velocity initial equals the velocity in the x direction? Remember, you're at a constant velocity in the x direction, so the initial velocity is the final velocity. The velocity in the middle is just the velocity in the x direction. Great. We're solving for the change in time. I'll do that one this time. We multiply both sides by the change in time. Change in time cancels out. We get the change in time multiplied by the velocity in the x direction equals the displacement in the x direction. We divide both sides by the velocity in the x direction. The velocity in the x direction cancels out on the left hand side. We get the change in time is equal to the displacement divided by the velocity in the x direction. Um. It's just out. So, change of time. <coughs> Displacement in the x direction, 2500 divided by the velocity in the x direction, which we got to be 64.707 through the magic of trig. Therefore, we get the change of time. Thirty-eight, correct? Yep. So we now have the change of time. We are close. Susan, what are we doing next? Um, Velocity initial in the y direction was 24, 1.481, multiplied by the change in time, 38.6356, plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction, which is negative 9.8, multiplied by the change in time, 38.6356, that squared. Therefore, the displacement in the y direction equals. 3074. We are close. We almost have the answer to how far above the peak the projectile is when it passes over it. What do we need to do now? Brent, we're close. Um, you should check 1800 from 2000. Because this is equal to 1800 plus part B, right? So B then is going to be equal to the 2015.3074 minus the 1800 or 215.3074 with sig figs, 220. Brief review, picture helpful. Identifying the displacement in the y direction being equal to zero, so you can reuse the range equation, very helpful. Projectile motion. First, we're going to break the initial velocity into its components so we can list what we know in the x direction, y direction, solving for time so we can use it in the other direction. Basic idea.